In the final video on structural motion, we'll look at a few more techniques for creating believable and realistic motion. We'll see how different easing curves can represent gravity and momentum. In real life, nothing really stops or starts immediately. It's always speeding up or slowing down. So we want to make sure that's true for our products and websites too. When things do happen instantly online, it can be confusing or disorienting. By adding motion that mimics reality, we're able to provide additional context and improve usability. Our app and landing page are looking pretty good, so we'll be looking at a few examples outside of the app for the last few videos. Since we've already gone over most of the motion features in Studio, for this last few examples, we won't be starting the animations from scratch, but we'll just be modifying them. I've still included the files below though if you'd like to play with them. We'll select this artboard and then preview. This is just an abstract example of a couple cards moving onto the page and then going off of it again. You can see right now it looks a little jumpy, and that's because I've set the easing curves to linear. In the same way that a page transitioning instantly doesn't really mimic real life, having motion start or stop immediately doesn't really either. Everything is always slowing down or speeding up. So if I go into the timeline and change it to ease both, which is the default, it already looks pretty good. We'll slow it down so we can see exactly what's happening. And so it comes in pretty fast, but then it slows down as it gets towards the end. Another thing we can do on the entrance state though, is set it to ease out. And this follows the guidelines to material design. Generally, if things are entering the page, they'll enter them fast and then slow down. And then when something is leaving the page, it'll start slow and then exit fast. And so if we go to our second artboard, We'll preview what it looks like when we have ease both. And on this one, I think it's a little more obvious where you can actually see it slows down before it exits the screen. But if we change it to ease in, it'll start slow. And then by the time it's off the screen, it's already moving pretty quick. In the next video, we'll take this example even a little further and add some personality to it. For now though, let's talk about some different motion principles. I'll jump over to this artboard and preview. Here we have four circles that have the same timing. The left is completely linear. The next one has the default ease in, ease out. The next one has custom easing. It eases out on one artboard and then it eases in on the other. And then the last one has that same custom easing as well as squash and stretch. And squash and stretch isn't something you see too much in web design, but you can see for this bouncing ball example, it definitely makes it look a lot more realistic. The way I have the easing set up on the middle one though is something that will be useful for web design. So when we go in and look at that one, we can see that it's set on ease out for the first transition. And then if we go over to the second transition, it's set on ease in. So basically it'll start really fast at the bottom, slows down as it gets to the top, and then speeds up again at the end. This is similar to our last example, where something came in pretty quick, slowed down as it left, and then sped up as it left the page. And then there's one more thing we can do to make this even more realistic. So you can see with the example on the right, the height transition takes the entire time. In real life though, most of that motion would be focused at the bottom rather than at the top. After it bounced off the ground, it stays pretty static, but it's really when it's hitting the ground and when it's taking off that it's moving. So in order to do that, We'll go into that third oval, and then we'll adjust the timing on only the height property. We can see it stretches out really quickly. And when we go to the second artboard, we want that to happen at the end of the transition. So it really doesn't squash until it hits the fictional ground that we have set up. If I go back to preview it, it's a pretty subtle change, but it does look just a little more realistic. And so even though this example isn't super applicable to UI design, I think it should give you a good sense of different ways that we can use motion to mimic reality. It's not always necessary, but it can definitely be a way to add a bit more personality, and it can also make things just be a bit more familiar or realistic. So that's about it for structural motion. In the next video, we'll be talking about emotional motion.